Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The FAA certifies the Legacy 450. NBAA expresses concern over EPA proposed aircraft admission rules. FAA issues a UAV commercial operation exemption for a paper airplane. I'm Bree Cross, it is September 2nd, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Another new executive jet will start service later this year. It's been announced that the FAA has certified Embraer executive jets, new Legacy 450. The approval comes a few weeks after the aircraft earned certification from Brazil's Civil Aeronautics Authority. Marco Pellegrini, president and CEO of Embraer Executive Jets, said in part, quote, the Legacy 450 is the first midnight jet with full fly-by-wire technology and sidekick flight controls. The digital controls produce a smoother flight, improve performance, and reduce pilot workload, end quote. The Legacy 450 seats up to nine people and has an operating range of 2,348 nautical miles at Mach 0.80. The airplane has a maximum ceiling of 45,000 feet and a top speed of Mach 0.83. The first Legacy 450 delivery is scheduled for the fourth quarter of 2015. In formal comments submitted this week, the MBAA reiterated the association's significant concern over a recent announcement from the Environmental Protection Agency that the agency might consider new regulations for the aircraft carbon emissions. NBAA's comments follow the agency's release in June of an advance notice of proposed rulemaking from the EPA, asserting the agency's authority to introduce new aircraft emissions regulations based on its endangerment findings. The comments said in part, quote, the business aviation community remains committed to improving our sector's environmental performance through a variety of operational, technical, and policy measures, end quote. The MBAA also pointed out that business aviation CO2 emissions only represent about 2% of all aviation carbon emissions and only 0.04% of global man-made emissions. The MBAA also expressed concern about the EPA issuing regulations without considering unilateral aircraft standards now being proposed in international forums. The MBAA and all other sectors of the aviation industry have emphasized the need for a strategy on aircraft emissions policy that is focused on improvements in the efficiency of operations, modernization of the air traffic control infrastructure, investments in new technology, and market-based measures. Such an approach was endorsed at ICAO's 38th General Assembly in 2013. After the break, Powered Paper UAV gets FAA approval. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at news.net. As small UAV operators wait for the FAA to come up with their long overdue regulations regarding operation of these aerial vehicles, this story will lead you to wonder what's going on at the FAA. Last week, the FAA granted a Section 333 commercial operation exemption to noted UAV advocate, lawyer, and commercial helicopter pilot Peter Sachs for his Power Up 3.0 smartphone controlled powered paper airplane. The UAV manufacturer, Taylor Toys, says that the device can transform a normal paper airplane into smartphone controlled flying machines with a range of 180 feet and 10 minutes of endurance. 
According to a report in Forbes, the FAA says Sachs, quote, submitted a valid petition for exemption and we granted the requested relief, end quote. It appears Sachs was seeking the exemption for the purpose of commercial photography. Sachs told Forbes that even with the exemption, he could not fly the paper airplane commercially because his commercial helicopter certificate is not current. Sachs also took a jab at the FAA, saying that granting the exemption shows the FAA has, quote, abandon all logic and sensibility in declaring a paper airplane that weighs less than one ounce an aircraft. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. And we design these one slice at a time. So you design a slice of the balloon and you measure, you calculate the lift, the weight, the sort of center of gravity of that slice. And then you design the next slice above it and you keep working your way up. We have all seen the fascinating and sometimes weird shapes that hot air balloons can form. In this video, you'll learn about the science involved of building and flying these oddly shaped balloons. Search the many faces of the ABQ on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, a man faces criminal charges after airplane accident. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A Vermont man has recently been charged with a criminal complaint and arrested after crashing an airplane in June of this year. It's alleged he falsified FAA documents and failed to report a history of arrests involving driving under the influence. Boeing will provide nine P-8A Poseidon aircraft to the U.S. Navy and another aircraft will go to the Royal Australian Air Force. The U.S. Navy and the RAAF have established a joint program office that operates a naval air station, Patuxent River, Maryland. A San Diego area pilot was fatally injured last week when the PA-25 Pawnee he was flying went down in the desert north of Los Angeles. He was reportedly volunteering with the Wounded Warrior Project, towing gliders aloft with wounded vets aboard. NASA has completed the first developmental test series on the RS-25 engines that will power the agency's new space launch system. The test series wrapped up last week with a seventh hot fire test of a developmental engine. Two women on board a JetBlue flight from Kingston, Jamaica to JFK got into a brawl as the flight arrived at the gate, resulting in two arrests. Another passenger trying to break up the fight was slashed with an eyebrow razor. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. In this report, we give the aviation community a reason to cheer. Wings Aerospace Academy, a charter school with a focus on aviation, is now open for business. The school is a tuition-free middle and future high school charter program, providing hands-on aerospace experiences, according to its website. This year, students in grades 6 to 8 will begin the program. Wings Aerospace Academy offers a blended learning format by bringing the best of education technology. Training will combine online learning via core courses provided by a certified multi-district charter school, an Elevate Academy, and hands-on aerospace-based STEM curricula 
provided in the Wings Aerospace Academy settings. It was reported on a television interview that Director of Education Robert Stannard and students will attend classes one day per week at the museum and the rest of the week they will learn online at home. Mark Hyatt, Chief Operations Officer for Wings Over the Rockies, told the TV station that the students will get a solid foundation in aviation, rockets, engineering, and coding. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.